WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Click it or ticket. The Kentucky Office of Highway Safety and local law enforcement are gearing up for the 2019 Memorial Day weekend with a briefing on getting drivers to play it safe on the roads. WYMT's Will Puckett has more. It is a pretty simple concept. Keep people safe, save lives and injuries. Click it or ticket, a common phrase we have been hearing for years. It's a time for, for troopers and other law enforcement uh, officers as well to, to focus on those issues and, and try to drive the usage uh, numbers up uh, for those things and then get our fatalities down. Across the state of Kentucky, seatbelt usage is on the rise. Uh, there are people are wearing them. Uh, of course, the, the seatbelt statute has been in effect for uh, several years now. At almost 90%, but in the end, this campaign is simply about saving lives. And right now, it is doing just that. But here in eastern Kentucky, it's home to the county with the most no seatbelt deaths in Kentucky. And State Trooper Jody Sims knows this county all too well. Obviously, it's, it's not uh, a number or a list that any county wants to top. And when it's one that's close to home here, then, you know, obviously we want to give that more attention and try to get Perry County uh, off that list. Because Perry County is his home county and one he and others care deeply about. Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. The Click It or Ticket campaign starts May 20th and runs until June 2nd. Well, hopefully you got out and enjoyed that sunshine today. And if you haven't, well, you still got a couple of hours to do so. You'll notice as we take a look at a few of those cameras, those blue skies and plenty of sunshine looking over into Prestonsburg at our Stonecrest camera. And even as we look up into the National Weather Service in Jackson, temperatures at 83 degrees and feeling like that. Those dew points only into the upper 50s, so maybe a little bit muggy out there, but still not feeling too bad and just very calm conditions. But I'll, that'll change just really as we head into the next 24 hours. You'll notice those low to mid 80s across my of the area definitely warm out there. If you are going to be headed out soon, make sure to have water and maybe even some sunscreen with you if you're going to be out, the sun, out in the sun for a little bit. Now, satellite and radar shows those clouds that we've seen throughout the day, just a few of those, but those rain chances you'll notice remain down to the south. You're seeing those over into far eastern Tennessee. Now, we'll continue to see those showers increase as really as we head into the next couple of hours, mostly as we head into your Thursday. Cold front is approaching the mountains. I'll have those details coming up in just a few short minutes. Steve. All right. Thank you, Paige. Investigators in suburban Denver are interviewing witnesses today, trying to figure out why two students opened fire on their fellow classmates. CBS's David Begno has the latest from Highland Ranch, Colorado. Police in Colorado say the two suspects in Tuesday's school shooting opened fire on fellow students with at least two handguns. 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo died and eight others were wounded. Within two minutes, police were at the scene. We did not exchange any gunfire with them. I believe one of them was restrained when the deputies uh, uh, came in contact with them. Police say a school security guard subdued 18-year-old Devin Erickson. The second suspect, a juvenile female, surrendered to police. Neither one of them were of legal age to own or purchase a gun. High school student Michael Schwartz says the suspect Erickson suggested he might do something like this. I always thought he was just messing around and stuff, but sometimes he did hint at it here and there. The STEM school is closed for at least the remainder of the week as investigators process the crime scene and the community comes to grips with this tragedy. We're going to take care of those who are down and pick ourselves back up. But who we are is we are a kind, compassionate, caring people. And this does not define us. It won't today and it won't tomorrow. Castillo, the student who died, was scheduled to graduate high school in just a few days. David Begno, CBS News, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. The attack occurred less than a month after the 20th anniversary of the Columbine High School massacre in nearby Littleton, about five miles away. With hundreds of pension plans on the verge of failure, mine workers lobby Congress to step in. The United Mine Workers of America will be on Capitol Hill all week. They are asking lawmakers to create a low interest loan program through the Treasury Department to float their pension plan. Senator Sherrod Brown says Congress needs to protect the retirements of these mine workers and everyone else whose guaranteed pension is in jeopardy. 
their jobs are as dangerous as any. Uh, we've got to make a decision, do we do, we do them first or do we do uh, everybody that's in this precarious situation? Those who are against creating a federal rescue package for pension plans say shafted workers deserve sympathy, but they say the solution is better government oversight rather than a taxpayer bailout. A government agency already insures pensions, but if a plan goes under, it only covers a portion of what workers are due, and that federal insurance is in financial distress as well. Tensions are reaching an all-time high between House Democrats and the Trump administration. Members of the House Judiciary Committee voted late this afternoon to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress. Today's hearing comes after negotiations broke down between Chairman Nadler and the Department of Justice over the release of the full Mueller report and underlying materials. Here's what Nadler had to say before today's vote. If allowed to go unchecked, this obstruction means the end of congressional oversight. In response to the House moving forward, the Department of Justice sent Nadler a letter saying, quote, the president has exerted executive privilege over the entirety of the subpoenaed materials. Could there be a new mode of transportation in Lexington? There is a proposal in the works that would bring electric scooters to the city. The companies would operate like the current spin bike program that brought dozens of orange bicycles to the town. We are that size of a city. It's, a, it's a, a very good market for these types of things. Riders must be at least 16 years old to rent an electric scooter or bicycle, and while helmets are recommended, they will not be required. A beloved San Francisco teacher has to pay for her own substitute teacher while on medical leave for cancer and parents are outraged. The woman is a second grade teacher. Her friends at Glen Park Elementary say she suffers from breast cancer. While on medical leave, funds are deducted from her paychecks to pay for the substitute teacher. A fundraising page was created to help pay for the sub, but it has stopped accepting donations. School officials say it's all due to language in California state law. We'd love to change it, but uh, we're working in a public school system that's been financially uh, uh, on starvation. A spokesperson for the California Department of Education declined to comment about the policy. Public school teachers in California are also unable to draw benefits from the state's disability insurance program because they do not pay into it. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, city officials in Middlesbrough need thousands of dollars in donations. Find out what those funds will be used for just ahead. And are those allergies acting up once again? Well, it's probably because those trees in the grass are high to very high right now. Good news is relief is on the way. Bad news is that relief all is rain. We'll talk about that and more coming up in just a few short minutes. National Historical Park staff are taking precautions to keep the parks safe and lively for everyone have the details coming up.